God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hallelujah. All right. Okay, hallelujah. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. There we are. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning. God bless you all. God bless you all. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for much, so much for being patient with us. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 All right. We're getting there. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Listen, let's like and share this morning. Let's like and share this morning. Hey, give me some hearts and likes. And let me know you can hear me well. Amen. Let me know you can hear me. Let me, let me know you can hear me. I'm working on uh, trying to perfect this new system. And uh, Facebook seems to change something every day. <laughs> Amen. All right. Good, good. The, the likes and shares. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You can hear me. Oh, somebody putting up crying faces. Okay. Don't be crying. Who's crying? I can't see my comments yet. Amen. <laughs> Bless God for you, man. Thank you so much. We certainly appreciate you. We certainly appreciate you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. All right, we're about ready to get started. Listen, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you, God bless you. Welcome to another wonderful session of Inspire AM. Uh, we, we thank God for you being part, being a part of this broadcast today. Um, I'm still getting my likes and shares done. I'm, as I said, we're, we're working with a new system and we had a little snafu on yesterday. Uh, we certainly, um, we certainly um, thank you for your patience and uh, we appreciate you stick, ha sticking in here with us. Just had some technical difficulties yesterday that um, prevented us from being able to do what we needed to do. Amen. But God is good. God is good. God is good. We, we press on. We press on. Okay, there's my Chilton County family. Try not to try to try to always include my Chilton County family. I love my folks up in that area. And uh, man, God has so blessed us to be a part of one another's. Yeah, part of one another's lives. God bless you all. We certainly appreciate you. And uh, we're learning. We're still learning and growing. Amen. We're still learning and growing. We're still learning and growing. So we certainly appreciate you. Um, hanging in here with us and being patient with us. Amen. All right. All right. All right. Let's get ready to get started. This morning, you know, we've been talking in this month of Sivan about, um, about perfection and oneness. And perfection biblically means that we're maturing, we're growing, we're being brought to a completed end. Um, it, it means that, that we learn how to function between 
our justification and our sanctification. In other words, we have um, been set positionally right in Christ. Um, I was speaking to, 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 to my kids and some of their, some of, well, all of them are my kids. We had a, a Bible study Sunday evening, what an impromptu, and we were talking about um, how to manifest kingdom, our grind, our run, our press. And one of the concepts I was trying to get them to see what the, is that becoming kingdom and birthing kingdom requires yielding, not necessarily working and laboring so hard. And there's a lot to accomplish. There's a lot of things you want to accomplish in life, but listen, it comes through your yielding to Christ. It comes through yielding and letting Christ work through us. Amen. And so as we mature, we have to understand that we have positionally been set at a certain place in God, but, but, but our living has to be a sanctification process whereby we learn to manifest that more completely over time. Okay, so your, your, your position, your justification is set, but your sanctification is ongoing. And so this affects every area of our human and kingdom experience, okay? This affects every area. So our growth and our progression and our maturity and all those things are gonna be, are gonna be um, taking place simultaneously as we move in kingdom, amen. So watch this. Um, it, 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 how mature you are kind of helps govern your perspective on what you see, how you see things, and how you behave and react to them. So we've been talking about in this, in this, in this week, uh, well, we talked about Monday. Again, Tuesday was a, was a kind of a snafu. But we talked about on Monday um, relations and how we relate to one another. And in this current climate, um, where we're dealing with a lot of race relations, our, our nation is seeing riots. Our nation is seeing um, 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 protests. Our nation is seeing looting. Um, and let me make a distinction. One of our sisters on video made such a beautiful distinction on what those things are because a lot of times we heap everybody into one big pile. But, but, but social injustice is not acceptable. Um, it's not acceptable regardless of who uh, is involved and what color they are. Now, unfortunately, well, fortunately, and this is God's design, the kingdom, the kingdom is made up of people of all different colors, all races, all ethnicities. And that's the beauty of being the kingdom. That's the beauty of being the kingdom. But one of the things I want us to understand, one of the things I want us to understand is this, that just like the, the world has issues with humanity, likewise, the kingdom has issues with its humanity. So the same moral issues that the world experiences, the same um, issues of morality that, um, that we find happening uh, with social injustices, police brutality, um, 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 protesters, rioters, and looters, those same things, watch this, they all can, can be varied and experienced because they all involve what? People, people. So the kingdom is made up of people, souls, but there should be a unity as, as Jesus prayed in John 17, Lord, make us one. So, so I, wanna, I, want to, um, I want to put this um, in, 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 in play for today. I want to talk about this today. I want to look at John the ninth chapter verse, I mean, John the 15th chapter, verses 9 through 17. John the 15th chapter, verses 9 through 17. That's our context. So let's get that context on screen for us quickly, please. John 15, verses 9 through 17. John 15, 9 through 17. Now, now, why, why, why do I want to take us here today? Because um, um, I want us to understand that in relations and, and based on your maturity, your being perfected, your oneness is going to be affected. Listen, your oneness with your spouse, your oneness with your children, your oneness with other people in the kingdom, your oneness even with your enemies is going to be affected. Those relationships are affected by how mature the, the, the varying entities are that are a part of that relationship. Now, we've talked about relationship before and understanding that relationship or relations occurs between different entities and how they connect and they vibe with one another. So, I made a point earlier, I started on a point earlier about the, the protesters, the rioters, and the looters. Those are three different people in the same space. And what, what happens is in media, in our understanding, we, we, we tend to paint them with one broad brush. Because watch this, 
protesters have a cause that they're there for a reason the reason we're seeing protests in the country and we're seeing the black lives matter move and we're seeing all these other organizations that are working toward um is working toward a goal it's because of watch this inequality in our systems and watch this police brutality it's because of loss of life there is a cause there is a unifying motivating um goal in mind that's for protesters. Rioters, watch this, they're showing up in the same space, but they've got a different unifying rallying call. Rioters are there for violence. They're there to, to be social disruptors, okay? So they're not necessarily there for your cause. They'll get into the, into the crowd and they're, just, just, they're there to, to throw the rocks at the police and throw the bottles and to throw the Molotov cocktails. So, so, but they're in the same space. Okay, and then watch this. That last group is the looters. The looters are there. Watch this for a different cause. They may be going through economic depression. They may be going through a spirit of greed. Whatever their motivation is, they're there to destroy the stores, to break the windows, to take the stuff. So watch this, what can happen in the same space. There can be one person there um, speaking for a cause that is noble. The next person there that's, that's doing ignoble acts because they're attacking the police. And the third person there who's, who's looking out from a selfish motivation and they just want some new Nikes in the same space. And what happens is, watch this, when you get a camera and you shoot a shot, you can only govern them by their actions. Okay, so, 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 so I said all that to say, um, all these things can be things that separate us and divide us in this month of Sivan. No wonder we're seeing so much unrest. Watch this, and no wonder we're seeing so much, so much division. Please make a note of Matthew 24. We hit Matthew 24 on Monday. We told, showed you that there would come a time when nation would rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Matthew 24, there would be the, the ethnos and the basilia coming into a kingdom collision. Watch this, the ethnos and the basilia coming into a kingdom collision. That means, watch this, that they're going to be people of different ethnicities. That's the ethnos, nation against nation. Watch this, different ethnicities. And then Basilia, people who are under the influence of different leaders, different spirits of leaders, different, different um, 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 entities that are governed by another spirit. And so we see here in Matthew 24 that that time had to come. But God told us, that Jesus told us, through his, I mean, the God told us through his son, Jesus, watch this, that we should not fear. We should not be anxious. We're not going to get agitated about this. And watch this. Let me say this too from a therapeutic standpoint, from a therapeutic standpoint, that you can be anxious or frustrated or angry and not manifest outward signs. In other words, watch this. You could be walking around with your blood pressure high because of anxiety, frustration. The body experiences more sickness when you've got unresolved emotional stressors. Okay, I'm, I'm in my therapy mode for a moment. When you have unresolved things that are pressing on you in your relationships, in your significant world, in significant relational group, and in the world abroad, when you have different stressors, you manifest that in your body in different ways. Watch this, some of us eat too much. Some of us um, are self-deprecating. We have a bad view of ourselves and we beat ourselves up. Some of us get angry. We're angry people. We're on edge. I've had to be careful because I had to realize even in myself, I've been on edge. I've been on edge. Watch this. Some of us have a paralyzing type emotion that happens where we can't seem to accomplish things or do things. Some of us self-isolate and not because of COVID-19 but because of emotional stressors. Some of us cry more. Some of us are, are hypersexual. Some of us drink more. The humanity reacts in different ways when they have different stressors, okay? So there's my therapeutic moment for a minute. This is kingdom therapy. But let's talk relations for a minute. And I'm going to talk about this word that many of us use and, and, and I want to be careful on how we use it in, 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 in the future. Watch this. John 15, verses 9 through 17. I'm going to key in on verse 14 for a minute. Watch this. But we're going to start at verse 9. Watch this. As the Father had loved me, 
so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. So he says, one of the first things to walking with me, one of the first things to walking with me is can you keep my commandments? Because keeping of my commandments is going to indicate how much love you have for me. Now watch this. We got to understand this, that when we talk about keeping his commandments and this love concept, it means, watch this, that you're going to, how much unconditional agape love you have for the Father. In other words, in other words, Father, I love you so much that if you tell me through your word that I've got to give something up because I love you so much, I'll give it up. If you tell me through your word that I've got to do a certain thing, be a certain thing, uh, work under certain conditions, I'll do those things because I love you just that much. Watch this. Verse 11 says, these things have I spoken unto you that, that watch this, that my joy might remain in you. So watch this, your emotional condition, his joy. He says, I want my joy to remain in you. What is this joy? What is this joy? It comes from the word kara. Kara is where you get the, is where we get the karis from. Kara, it means a, a joy received from you. Watch this, it's your gladness. So watch this, uh, when, when people live, Watch this, in opposition to God's commands, you're going to bring down or break down your own internal joy, your own internal peace. So let me say this to you. As you have um, seasons of not having joy or not having peace, you're going to affect the people around you with that. A lot of people who are around you, watch this, is, are, are not really mad at you. They're mad at themselves because they can't have peace within themselves. And we know that that peace that we have, the Irene, comes with, first of all, having peace with God. He says, peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth I unto you. Watch this. But I'm going to give you a peace that passes all understanding. Watch this. So the peace that God, that God gives us through Jesus Christ is a peace with him, that's relational, a peace within, that's the self, and a peace with others. That's how, that's how many dimensions Watch this. And sometimes you even have to have a peace with your circumstances. And I'm making these angles because you got to understand you're relating on all of these angles at one time. Your peace and joy within comes from the Father through Jesus Christ. And you have to find that peace with others. There's so many angles of relationship happening in you at one time. And so he says, one of the biggest things I need you to understand Watch, watch this, is that you, you've got to have your joy. Watch this, and that, that you got to have my joy. Watch this, in you. I want, I want you to make sure, make sure you understand these things I'm speaking to you, that my joy might remain in you. Watch this, and that your joy might be full. Now watch this. He says, he says, the, 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 the play role, the play role, it means, watch this, to be complete, to be Feel to be liberal. So watch this. He says, how you're relating to me, God the Father, God the Son, how the Holy Spirit's moving in you, the joy you have inside, watch this, it has varying degrees. Mm. So your obedience, as you move in disobedience, your joy comes down. As you move in obedience, your joy increases. He says, you gotta be full. You gotta be full. You got to be full. So, so when we talk about this full, what you got to understand in this fullness, the play role, play role, it is actually a verb. That means your joy is active. It's, it's in a verb state. It's active. Watch this. It's in effect or it's not in effect. So watch this. Your joy is important. And how you wake up every day and how you approach your family and how you approach situations and circumstances is a matter of always watch this it's not always what's happening in the circumstance your family or your friend most times it's what's happening between you and god you and god so watch this i'm not even to my main point yet stand by watch this now watch this here's what he says he says i want my joy he says be obedient and you'll have and you'll show me how much you love me and he says i'm showing you this so that my joy can be in you and your joy can be full Watch this. Now, after that, he says, watch. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Love one another as I have loved you. Now, watch this. 
This is the agapeo. Now watch this. This is the verb form of agape. It means, watch this, that you render love unto people. You give them love. You share that love. It is a well-pleasing love. Watch this. It is to be fond of a person. Watch this. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess you up in just a minute. I'm going to mess you up in just a minute. But watch this. He says, I want you to have an active love that is alive. Watch this. And he's already mentioned that it's going to come out of joy and it's going to come out of unconditional love for me. So what's the origin of the love you give to the world? Hmm. You got to understand this. He says, I want, this is my commandment. I want you to agapeo, agapeo one another. I want you to actively love one another. I want you to agapeo one another as I have agapeoed you. Now watch this. It means I have actively loved you. So you actively love other people. Now watch this. Now watch this. And then he says, this is the degree to which I want you to love. Greater love hath no man than this, than he laid down his life for his friends. Now, let's watch this. Let's, let's look at this. I want to examine this real quick. This is real maturity. We, this is some real maturity teaching here. Watch this. To lay down one's life means to place it, to fix it, to establish it. Watch this. To lay it aside, to put it in place. Watch this. So he says, when we talk about this, that, that, that no man has, has no greater love than this than to lay down his life. He says, watch this, to put your life in place. Watch this. This is not a laying down as in an abandonment. Watch this. This laying down in this context, I believe by the Spirit, really means that you establish it. You fix it. You put it in place. You make a conscious decision. I'm going to love people. I'm going to love people. Watch this. That's, that's a decision you make. Watch this. You lay, down your, you lay down his life for his friends. Watch this. So you got to lay down your suke, your thinking, your soul. This is cognitive as much as it is active. You got to actively decide I'm going to be a person who loves people. And he says you lay down your life. You, you do it in such a way that you do it for your friends. Now watch this. Watch this. You, you, we've been talking about a love thus far that is called agape or agapeo. Agape being the unconditional love of God, full of grace, full of peace, full of favorable, favorable disposition, and the agapeo, which actively causes you to live out that love. Agape, agapeo, an adoption of two words. But watch this. When we get to friends, we're going to see another word that means love, and it's called philos. 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 It's phileo. It's the word. It's the word family where you find uh, the name Philadelphia, the the city of brotherly love. Okay, so 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 phileos. It means a friend or a friendly one, associate, someone you wish well, a companion. It it it, it talks about. It means a relationship, somebody you're connected to. I'm coming to the kingdom. I'm walking into it. Stand with. Stay with me. Watch this. Now, Jesus says this. He says, and ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command you. Once again, he says, obedience is going to be a key to connectivity to me. He says, you are my friends. Watch this. You're my friends. So he's now talking to the disciples and the, that audience of people who might be listening. He says, you are my friends. So that's what I want to talk about today. Relationally, relationally, these degrees of relation. Watch this, watch this. We've been talking about speaking the truth in love. And we talked about physician heal thyself. How sometimes you can be mocked even in your anointing. And what we got to understand, watch this, is in your significant, your significant relation group, God expects a fruitfulness to come out of that group. Watch this. He, he calls them here. And he says, you're my friends when you do what I command. And he, then he goes to say, listen, you are no longer servants, but I now call you friends. Watch this. I call you friends. Why do I call you friends? Because we've got agape love. We're moving in the agape. Or we're actively loving one another. Watch this. Our joy is intact. Our peace is intact. And we're making a sacrificial decision to put our mindset down for the sake of the relationship. Oh, God. If we're going to birth kingdom, 
we've got to understand this concept of friendship. Now watch this. Why is this so, so important? Because Jesus goes on to say in verse, in, at, the, at, the, at the end clause of verse 15, but I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my father. Watch this. I have made known unto you. See, you can't really be friends unless you're willing to disclose kingdom one to another. You've got to be willing to share kingdom one to another. And in sharing kingdom, understand Jesus was sharing himself. He and the Father were one. Where he and, where he and, he and the Father were one, revealing of the Son is revealing of the Father, and revealing of the Father is revealing of the Son. So watch this. You're not going to have good relation with people unless you want to, first of all, reveal kingdom, reveal God, and also self-reveal. How do I, why do I say self-reveal? Because Jesus said, I am my father of one. He said this in John 14. Watch this. It, uh, 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 yeah, John 14. If you have seen the father, then you've seen me. So you can look at me and see God. And if you see God, you see me. And that's where we want to be in our maturity and our growth. We want people to be able to see God in us, God on us. And when they see us, they're glad to see us coming because they see the Father coming. I'm talking about kingdom relationship and birthing kingdom. It has to begin with change in you. And if we're going to have good relation across racial lines, ethnic lines, sexual lines, I'm sorry, I should, I should say gender lines, all of those things, we've got to be willing, watch this, to reveal kingdom as we reveal ourselves one to another. There must be accountability. There must be responsibility. Watch this, because God has chosen us to bear fruit in the earth. Watch this. He says, I, he says, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should bring forth fruit. That is, be productive. I should be able to see kingdom being birthed out of you. I should be able to see kingdom coming forth in your life. You're supposed to bring forth fruit and your fruit should remain. That whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you that ye love one another. So watch this. A, a love that is hidden is not a matured love. See, love doesn't cause us to hide ourselves from one another. Love causes us to expose kingdom and self to others. Listen, how much do you know of the folk in your circle? Come on, somebody. I'm talking about relations now. How much do you know of the folk in your circle? Do you know what makes them happy? Do you know what makes them sad? Do you know what offends them? Do you know how to walk in, 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 in conversation with them and not be offensive to them? Do you know, do you know their, their history, how they've been hurt, how they've been wounded, what they've gone through? Do you know there's certain topics that when you discuss them with them, you must approach it first with prayer because you know that topic and that subject matter is going to be tough for them. It's going to hurt them because it deals with old wounds. Do you know their triggers? Do you know there are certain subjects that are automatically going to hit their suitcase, that are going to hit their soul? Are you willing to lay down your soul for theirs. See, you got to understand this. We got to understand how we relate one to another. You, you got to listen, listen. What we, what we got to do is learn how to become a friend to the worst of them so that we can display the best of kingdom. Come on, somebody. You got to learn how to become a friend in relation, in, a, in an open disclosing relationship with the worst of them so that you can be a, a, a revealer of the best of the kingdom. Listen, you gotta, you gotta deal with some folk who don't look like you, who are not like you, who may not be as spiritual as you. You may consider them to be less mature than you, but listen, are you care, do you care enough and are you mature enough to birth the kingdom? Can you come down off of your high horse, come down off of your title, Come down off of your self-piety long enough to get in the gutter with people. Let me show you a gutter moment. Come on, somebody. Can I take you to a gutter moment? Because watch this. We won't, we, oh God, mm, I hear a word. I hear a word. I hear a word. Some of us got gutter grace. Watch this, gutter grace. And that's not a negative connotation. It means that God has graced us to be able to deal with the least of them. You see, some of us, Oh, God, 
We're so busy running away from where we came from that we've not looked back to bring anybody else to where we are. Let me say it again. We're so busy running away from where we came from that we don't care enough to go back and get somebody and bring them to where we are. Watch this. So you've been abused. Have you taken time to heal yourself, mature yourself, grow enough to be able to rescue those who are being abused? Ah, so you've been deceived. Are you mature enough and secure enough now to go back and rescue those that are still in the uh, 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 deception? That's it, Bishop Gary. Get in the trenches. Watch this. Ha 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 have you been delivered enough from your from your um, um, sexual issues or marital issues or religious ideals or family issues? Have you been delivered and matured enough to just step back a little bit on the road and pick somebody up and bring them up to where you are and you keep moving together? Do you have enough racial sensitivity, watch this, to be able to go back and rescue somebody who's less mature on racial issues than you are and bring them to that level of understanding? Do you have enough love for them to get in the gutter with your gutter grace? You need, you, listen, you, you need to be a part of the solution because watch this apathy, being apathetic, that is taking no action is just as innocuous or just as ineffective of, of, of taking a, as, as taking a wrong action. See, sometimes watch this, when you, when you see wrong, if you won't say wrong, then they can never get to righteousness. Let me say it again. If you see wrong and you won't say wrong, this is the year of manifestation. We've got to learn to walk in truth and we've got to speak truth in love. If you see wrong and we don't say wrong, then you are just as guilty as those who are in that wrong. Okay. Let me, let me, let me take you to the gutter for a minute. Matthew 11, verse 16 through 24. Let's go to the gutter for a minute. Come on, come on. Gutter grace, Matthew 11, 16 through 24. But whereunto, watch this, this is Jesus talking, but whereunto shall I liken this generation? Oh God. So watch this. So watch this. It's funny, I was talking, talking to my kids and we've been in some, in some strong debate on some very, very important and critical issues that are affecting my family. And, um, and, and forgive me if I haven't always been available to you, but there are times when you got to deal with your first ministry. So my first ministry was in need of me as a father and a priest of my family. And so I had to deal with some things and maybe I didn't answer all your calls or didn't do everything properly. I apologize for that. But listen, I don't apologize for it in the same breath because watch this, um, I need to do some first ministry. So watch this. Each generation, watch this, every generation has something that, that, that gives them identity. It gives them identity. It's something they're known for or known as. OK, uh, one generation's work works, works hard. And the next generation wants to be given everything. And what we got to understand is that we affect one another in that what we do generationally affects the next generation. OK, so watch this. So Jesus says, watch this. Whereunto shall I liken this generation? Oh, God, it is like unto children. Watch this. Oh, God, it is like unto children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows. So, so watch this. Children, first of all, Jesus, is, he, he ain't giving them a compliment. He's slamming them. He's saying, y'all grown folks, but y'all acting like children. Y'all are sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows <laughs> and saying, we have piped, but yet ye have not danced. We have mourned unto you, and yet ye have not lamented. Watch this. He says, he says, he says, we played the music but you won't dance to the wedding music. We play funeral music, but you won't play to the funeral music. Let me, let me read this, let me read this, let me read this now in the Amplified Version just for clarity's sake, watch this. He says, but what shall I liken, uh, what, but what shall I liken this generation? It is like little children sitting in the marketplace. That is places of business where big things gotta happen and they're calling to their playmates. Oh God. He, say, he, says, he says, we piped to you. We played the wedding songs, but you did not dance. We wailed dirges. We played funeral songs, but you were not born, and you're, you would not beat your breast and mourn and loud. In other words, we've done everything we can to get some emotion out of you, but you look like you can't feel nothing we said. Do you feel me? 
feel me? You know, that's a question we often ask in discussion. You feel what I'm saying? You feel me? They say, we played the music, but you won't dance to our music. He says, these are like little children. It's, it's a thing of immaturity. So watch this, watch this, watch this. He says, ah, God. He says, <laughs> he says, and John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he had the devil. In other words, John came, and he didn't come to the table at all. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. <laughs> I love this word. I love this word. Watch this. At a wedding or wedding banquets, what's one of the main things you have? Eating, drinking, and fellowship. Wine, song, a good time. At funerals, what do you do? Once you mourn, you have a, a repast. You eat. You drink, you be merry, you reflect on the life. So both of them involve, involve fellowship. But watch what happens. The Bible says that John came and he didn't eat nor drink with either one of y'all. John was on a mission. And then what happened? Because he wasn't so sociable, y'all said he had a devil. <laughs> y'all said he had a devil. <laughs> y'all said he wasn't of the kingdom because he didn't come playing no games. See, one of the things about speaking truth is that sometimes people who speak truth can be a little bit harsh at times and maybe be very direct. They don't have time to play with you. They don't, they don't want to sit down and have a drink with you. They want to get down to what we need to talk about. Let's talk about some stuff for real. Don't, don't, don't sit me down at the table and let's, let's, let's have a bunch of fellowship together and never get the truth. John came to handle business. Watch this. Verse 19 says, the son of man came, watch this, now watch what the son of man did. And you got to understand, you can speak truth in both contexts. Watch this. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they said, and they say, watch this, behold a man gluttonous and a wine bibber, watch this, and a friend of publicans and sinners, but wisdom is justified of her children. Watch this, watch this. <laughs> he says, John came. He was about kingdom. He was straight business. He didn't eat or drink. He fasted. He only ate, uh, 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 he, he wore wild camel's hair and ate honey. So he wasn't playing with y'all. He was straight, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But watch this. Here comes Jesus. Jesus comes and he's more relational. Watch this. He's eating. He's drinking. Watch this. But he's still declaring. Remember, the son of man came, Jesus said, I mean, John said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. John, I mean, Jesus, after he was baptized by John, he went forth and he preached kingdom. Both of them had a, watch this, a confrontational in your face, you better change type message. They both said repent. They both said the same thing. And watch this. And God used them in two different fashions to get over the same message. Can I help you with this? Be careful to know that many times we're saying the same thing, but we're coming from two different perspectives. We're coming from two different techniques. Some folk get straight at it. Other folks want to sit down at the table and talk and wine and dine and do all that, but you better get to the truth. So Jesus came eating and drinking in fellowship, but watch this, but then you drug his name. You said, watch this, behold a gluttonous man and a wine bibber and a friend of publicans. He said, <laughs> watch this, check this out. Um, um, uh, uh, you, you, you called him, you called him a gluttonous man, a, 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 a voracious man. You, you, he, he just wants to sit down and get full. He, he, he's greedy. He's greedy. This Jesus dude, he always sitting down eating with somebody. Every time they got fish, they got a fish fry, there he goes showing up. Come on, you got to catch that. Every time he got a fish fry, there he is showing because he ate with his disciples on the seashore. That was a joke. Listen, every time we do the fish fry, he come and he take a to-go plate with him. That's just, watch, watch this. Watch this. Not only did you say he ate too much, but you said he drank too much. He is a wine bibber. Listen, he's a glutton. He's a drunk. <laughs> Every time we have a wedding, there he go. We at the wedding, and he making wine. Oh, come on. You missing the miracle for picking at the man. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. He's a, listen, he, he want to eat too much. He's a wine member. Now watch this. And then he's a friend. Oh, God. He is a philos 
he is a brother to publicans and sinners. The publicans, watch this, the, what's, what's the, 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 the publicans were tax collectors. They were the most hated people in Jewish society because what the publicans would do is they would come around and take taxes for Caesar and then they would charge you more taxes so that they could, they could watch this embezzle money for themselves. So, so you didn't like to see the IRS in sandals coming to see you. Ah, Jesus. They didn't like to see the, 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 the publicans coming because the publicans would take your last out of greed for themselves. So watch this. Now watch this. He was not only um, friends to the tax collectors, but also the, 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 the publicans are tax, but the sinners, folks who were in sin, that's why he kept around a prostitute. Oh, come on, somebody. Uh, listen, a converted prostitute, a converted tax collector, a converted rebel. The, watch this. All the folks he kept around, he had to first get into the gutter to win them. You got to understand this. Listen, listen. Until you can relate to them in their worst, you cannot birth them to the kingdom of their best. Until you can relate to them in their worst, you cannot birth them into the kingdom to receive their, their best. <coughs> so we got to understand that. You, so you got some gutter grace, folks. But watch this. Listen to, listen, to this, listen to the statement. But wisdom is justified of her children. Wisdom, watch this. Wisdom is proving in how we learn how to handle situations. Oh, God. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Wisdom is justified, justified of her children. Wisdom is justified in, and vindicated by what she does and by her children. In other words, when you use wisdom, watch this. You show that you are mature and know how to handle wisdom. You know how to approach people. You know how to have the tough conversation. You know how to talk about the sensitive subjects. Listen, you cannot be a person who's going to show the love of Christ and build bridges in difficult situations in the competing nation against nation and kingdom, is, kingdom against kingdom. You got to know how to relate to them where they are. Now, let me give you a little bit of uh, Jesus. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me say it like it's a message and I'm gonna give you a little bit of clue on why you've been through some of the stuff you've been through. Watch this. Verse 19 in the message says it like this. I came feasting and they called me a lush. <laughs> a friend of riffraff. Opinion polls don't count for much, do they? <laughs> now, we know the message is a loose translation. It's a transliteration. It's not even a translation. It's a transliteration. <sighs> Getting to what it literally means. He said opinion polls don't count for much, do they? Now, let me say this to you. If you're going to be a person of truth, you can't always look at the numbers. Let me say it again. If you're going to be a person of truth, you can always look at the numbers. What numbers am I talking about? Oh, they don't like me. How many folk like you and how many folk don't like you? Opinion polls. Do you like what I just said or do you not like what I said? Opinion polls. You can always look at, oh, God, I'm so lonely. I don't have enough friends. Listen, you got the ones God wants you to have. Because watch this. If they can't, watch this, if they can't love you through truth, they don't have mature love. Listen, that's one thing we got to understand too. We got to stop painting everything with a broad brush. You can't say just because people, okay, I'm going to touch this sensitive subject again. You can't say just because people don't love you, I mean, that don't, don't speak up on an issue that affects you that they don't love. Their love may be immature. Their love may be undeveloped. They love love may not be fully unconditional yet that love may even be biased in some to some degree because all of us have biases mm -hmm. okay 
You ain't got no bias? Watch this. Do you defend other folks' children as hard as you defend your own? Come here, mother hens. Will you fight for my children like you fight for your own? Do you see justice for all as you see justice for one? Would you feel differently about an incident if it struck your house? Come on, come on. All of us have biases based on relationship, based on the centrifugal circles of how closely we're, we're connected. We all have biases based on degrees of separation. How close are they to me? This is my, watch this, this ain't, this is my real friend. This is my good friend. This is my best friend. Watch this. That is an indication of how much you have revealed to them of you and how much they have revealed of themselves to you. Jesus said that he established friendship in the revelation of kingdom and the revelation of self. You got to understand. Yeah, we have biases. We have varying degrees. It's a part of our natural makeup. Watch this. Let me tell you how biased Jesus was. Watch this. Watch this. He dealt with three more closely than he dealt with the 12. Peter, James, and John were an inner circle, and yet he called them all friends. There were varying degrees of understanding, varying degrees of connection. And you can't say, watch this, that, that somebody doesn't love because they don't do everything you want them to do. Or because they don't do everything right. Can I say to you, oh brother, oh sister, you don't do everything right. Because none of us is 100%. Thank God for grace. Thank God for grace. He says opinion polls, they don't matter much, do they? Watch this. Watch this. I'm still reading message, trans message translation, Matthew 11 through 19. The proof of the pudding is in the eating, the unforced rhythms of grace. In other words, the, when we say the proof is in the pudding or the proof of the pudding is in the eating, it means, watch this, that it ain't about, about what you're saying, it's about what you're doing. What are you doing? What are you doing? So he says, he says, he says, no matter how I give it to you, you act like it ain't good enough. Now watch this. This is two individual examples of their approach to birthing kingdom and how the greater part of society receives it. John came and he wasn't playing the fiddle with you. He wasn't playing the piano with you. John was straight up. You better repent for the kingdom of heaven is hand. Jesus came. He sat at the table with you. He, he began to pull down that you're whitewashed. You're, you're full of dead men's bones, but, but I can bring salvation. Jesus took a different approach than John took birth, both in birth and kingdom. But no matter what you do, somebody is going to dislike what you're doing. You cannot Wait for the opinion polls to approve you. Your approval must, watch this, be found in your joy, your peace, your, your love that's inside of you because you're following the commandments of God. You better become a God-assured kingdom birther that whatever you're birthing, God has assured within you, within you, that you're doing what needs to be right, that you spiritually discerned and you understand what you're doing and you're honoring God through your actions and you're building relations and relationships based on the purity of what's inside of you. This is kingdom maturity. And if you're going to birth the kingdom, you got to be willing to reveal Christ and reveal you. Listen, they're going to know some things about your life. And let me tell you, I told you I was going to tell you some things about, about where you were, about where you were. Could it be? that you went through that gutter so you could develop that gutter grace? Watch this. Could it be that in your growth process, in, in your maturation, you're, you're being perfected, you're coming to this place that you had to experience certain things so that you could relate? See, the Hebrews 4 says this, that we have not a high priest who cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmity. Watch this. So my priesthood is based on what I can feel. And my infirmity that I come through helps me develop what I feel so that when I see other folks feeling the same way, I can step a little bit further back on the spectrum and help pull them to where I am. I can step back to them and raise them up to where I am. 
There's a reason why you had to go through that divorce. So you can help folks who have to go through divorce. There's a reason why you went through that season of prostitution. Because God sending you back to prostitutes to bring them to where they are. There's a reason why you went to all black schools. Because God was giving you an experience that you would one, one day have to convey in the kingdom to bring people to understand the black school experience. There's a reason why you was the only Negro in your all white classroom. Because God wants to use that to help people understand the effects of racism in those types of environments. There's a reason why you grew up in a, in, in a neighborhood and it wasn't many black folks, but it was all Hispanic folks because God wanted you to relate to that group of people so that you could help integrate the kingdom. You got to understand there's a reason why you experience what you experience. And God wants to use those things because he calls you friends. He wants relationship that can be revealing and bring revelation to other people. So watch this. I made a commitment that I'm not just going to unfriend you when you say something I don't like. That's a cop-out. That's a cop-out just to unfriend. Why don't you talk to me and let's come to a place of understanding? Why don't we dialogue? Why don't we get out of this monologue of just talking to God and come into the dialogue of talking to one another? We got we to gotta learn how to relate, people of God. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. These friends that Jesus talked about in John 15, he says, I've taken to the Father, I've revealed unto you. You are my friends. You're no longer just my servants, but you're my friends. These same friends, <laughs> he would later rebuke Peter. Peter, get thee hence from me. Get thee, get thee behind me, Satan. Listen, if you can't rebuke your friends and remain friends, y'all ain't friends in the first place. <laughs> Jesus says things like, how long have I been with you and you still don't know me? I'm steadily showing myself to you and you can't see. Listen, if you can't have hard conversations in your circle of friends, y'all ain't friends for real. We got to be able to, listen, sometimes it's going to get heated. Sometimes we're going to be on 100. But if I love you unconditionally and the unconditional love of God is in my heart and the unconditional love of God is in your heart, we'll go to 100. Come on back down here to 10 and let's relate to one another. Because all we were doing was dealing with the difficult situation and a difficult discussion, and we were trying to birth kingdom. So listen, I'm going to stop right there. I've been on this line too long this morning. Listen, I love you. I praise God for you. Uh, Mother Marley and Minister Cody are going to pray for us now. And listen, I want, you to pray. I, want you to, I want you to mature in how you relate to people, how you relate to people. You got to be willing not to just throw them away, but to try to birth kingdom. Come on, Mother Marl. Pray for us, Mama. Another morning. Glory to God. What a word, what a word. Glory to God. We have received the teaching of your word. Glory to God. When we're down and feeling down and out, glory to God, you send your word to encourage us to pick us up. Glory to God. Let us know. Glory to God. It is a blessing to be able to come before you. We thank you for calling us out of darkness yes, into this marvelous night. I thank you, glory to God, Father God, for everyone on the land before we hear the word of God. Glory to God. Now we know we can't just hear it, but we must obey it. And obey it means to go forth and make a difference in the lives of the people. To lift people up, to love people. Yes, Glory to God. To be about your business, Father. Some of the work of the kingdom. Glory to God. What a mighty God you are to call us to make a difference in the lives of your people. Lord God, we thank you. We are blessed. We are blessed. We can't take it lighter. We don't take it lighter. We thank you for your of your word that gives us a breath to see what you're saying to us, through us, and with us. Lord God, I thank you for everyone on this land. I plead the blood of Jesus over all of us that we have heard the word and we go forth to make a difference. Lord God, I thank you and I pray your blessing over the people who are going through that. Thank you for praying. Thank you. 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 Thank Touch the body, glory to God. Touch the body, touch the body. People are hurting, people are sick. Sick in mind, sick in heart, but sick in the body. Yes, glory Lord. to God. We know you are a lifter. Hallelujah. You are a healer. You are a developer. So we ask you in the name of Jesus, uh, uh, lift us up. Continue to bless us as we get down sometimes. Glory to God. If somebody always come along and pray for us, encourage us, and we must do the same for your children. Glory to God. What a time it is yes, to come Lord. before you receive the uh, strength from your word, from the yes, 
preaching of your word. I pray for the apostle that he will continue bringing the word of God to the people of God. We really must search ourselves and see where we are, where you're trying to take us. And if we stay back, get out of the way, listen to the word, hear the word, meditate on the word, and that you put in us who we are, who you want us to be. Yes, do what you want us to do. I thank you and I praise you this morning. I lift you up. I pray that apostle have no lack. That you continue to bless him and everyone on the line. Bless the families of those on the line. Glory to God. As we go forth, let us realize we are blessed to be called to make a difference in somebody's life. Keep believing. Keep reading. Keep studying. Keep meditating on the word of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Listen, we praise God for you being with us. Uh oh. Let me see. Let me see. Amen. Father, we thank you now, Lord God, for the prayer and intercession of Brother Mark Moore. We thank you, Lord God, for this time together today. We say magnify yourself in us. Allow us to continue to mature in you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Listen, don't forget to join us tomorrow for The Furnace with Bishop LaSheila Garrett right here at 6 a.m. We'll be sharing that broadcast to the Impact page. And likewise, on Friday, we'll be, we'll be joining uh, Bishop uh, Anthony Petway for Fresh Fire Friday. Man, I love the teaching that they're putting out. They do such a great job in the Word of God. But listen, we thank God for you. Our call back number today is going to be number 2307. 2307. You can dial that at 712-775-7099. Access code, access code um, 789-111. And then enter your reference, enter your reference of 2307. So we thank God for you being with us. Listen, be blessed in the word of God today, man. We have so enjoyed being with you. We pray that uh, God will continue to richly increase your life. Continue to help you learn to grow and relate to others. Listen, it's a challenge. Relationships can be challenging. But listen, love will overcome the challenge, okay? So let's love one another. Let's have the tough discussions. But let's keep pressing ahead in the kingdom. Let's birth this thing. We love you all. Have a great day and be blessed in the Lord.